Hey boys and girls, this is Larry, UVRailroad.com. Checking me out. Hey, this is part two of the How Truss Bridge. Here's what I use for guide wires. I just go out and I grab a bunch of these that have been sitting around a long time. These are utility flags. You can find them all over your cities, everywhere. Don't get the new ones, you know. I like to get the old ones. See all the rust in there? That's natural rust. You can't duplicate that any better than that. Okay, then when you get these, to strip the flag, just take a razor knife, come on the back side, go like this, flag comes right off, nice and easy. So now you got a bunch of these. See, I got a whole bunch of these because I'm going to be putting guide wires on my uh, truss bridge. And you can see the simplicity of all of this cool stuff. Just, eh, see? All right, I'm going to shut this off, then I'm going to get back to you. Okay, I got the front part of the bridge. I'm going to put the uh, bolts on and the tie, uh, the tie cables, support cables. But I want to show you something what I did. See how this is? You'll notice that most how trusses are actually angled. This wouldn't be here. This would be an angled piece, angled piece, and so on. But the reason I did this this way First of all, this is a real short bridge, and it was a bridge just for a certain item. It wasn't designed for anything other than the oil cars, so they wanted something cheap and fast, and I didn't want all of my truss bridges to look the same. I don't want it to look like somebody came in and mass produced my bridges. So I made my uh, supports on this one straight like this, but on my next one, they're going to be crooked, or not crooked, but angled, angled, and so forth. And it's going to be done just a little bit different. But you can see that I use basically two pieces. And then I put my cross brace in between them. Now i got to put a piece in here and a piece in here. And you can see this is crooked. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, I'll straighten all that out. And then I will take the birdie side, whichever side that is. Looks like this is... This is the purdy side. So I'm going to go ahead and put all the uh, tie rods in, all of the uh, bolts and stuff. Let me show you what I did for bolts. Just a second, I gotta put this down. I should have had this ready for you, but I, I totally forgot. Okay, these ones that I got now are a little smaller, but they're still within scale, okay? Uh, here's the ones that I wish I would have got because you could see them a lot better. I'll know the next time. But, right there. See the difference? They both look real good. Uh, this one right here is just a bolt and a washer. This one's like a flat plate. Uh, this one gives a lot more character, I think, but you know, there, there's plenty of them you can get from Ozark Miniature, all different kinds, so get, get the one you like, but this is my favorite one right here, the big guy. Okay, so uh, let me put this down, and uh, we'll get started. Okay, here I am. I'm drilling the holes. I got two there, two there, and I want to show you how I do this. To make them fairly straight, I just take any piece of scrap wood, depending on how far I want to space them, and I line this up to the bottom. Whoa, 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 whoa. I line this up along the bottom, and then I'll hold it and drill it on the back side of it. Okay, and then by doing so, you know most your bolts will be fairly much in line. Uh, you could take this all the way to the very end as well and put two there and then slide it over and do two more. Now, right here, you see how yucky that is? Well, we got a little cure for that. You just take a little piece of, well, not like, take a piece of wood about this size, okay? Not this thick, though. I'm gonna get a thinner one and I'll put it right here like the bridge broke or something or it's coming apart. And then I put, you know, like four or six uh, bolts in there to make it look like it's something that had to be shored up or something but anyway let me uh get to uh finishing this up and i'll get right back to you okay i'm going to start putting the uh, bolts in 
I got all my holes drilled. I got my little patch there. What I do is I take a piece of paper and put a drop of super glue on it. Take each one of these, dip it in there, and stick it in the hole. Uh, let me get these in. I'll get back to you. Okay, you can see that I got all the bolts in. Uh, I got it stained. You can kind of see the character that that adds. Uh, as far back as this is going to see uh, sit, you probably won't really notice them. But it's just going to be one of those little finer details that, you know, kind of make something stand out. You know, uh, you'll see once we get it up there the, the difference it makes. But uh, let me go ahead and put the guidelines on and guide wires and uh, I'll get back to you. Okay, I got it stained. I got all my boards and all my bolts and I started putting my guide wires in. Here's what it looks like from the back. You can kind of see those guide wires. Now in the front, I have to make the guide or put the guide wires in when I mount it because right here, this is going to sit on top of a three quarter inch. It's going to look like a beam. So I have to have three quarters of an inch plus what I have here and put them on put it all together at one time so uh, let me show you how this looks now that I've got all the bolts in it and you can get a real good idea of it uh, can you kind of see how all those bolts look and really add a lot of character to it this is like uh, the high detail this is the things that really bring out a layout because it's not something people look for but it's just like icing on the cake when you look at something it's very detailed and people would never notice it until they see what you have and then they notice it. So uh, if you want a really high detailed layout, this is the way to do it. If not, however you want to do it. If you don't want to put all those bolts in there, that's fine. I got uh, 48 of them in this side only. And the other one, I think I got like uh, 64. The bolts are the most expensive thing. The wood's free. The glue, eh. Uh, I didn't pin any of this uh, on this side. But uh, those bolts, I prob there's probably 15 to $20 in bolts just right there. So, choice is yours, but uh, let me finish it up and I'll get back to you. Okay, uh, the back side has five uprights. So I put these up here. I've got five of them. I got these two kind of angled the way they're going to go toward it. Um, I don't know if I'm going to angle that or straighten it out, but anyway, I haven't glued or put the bolts in them. But if you take the wires, and you know, if you can imagine all these wires in here like this, this is going to give it a lot of character. It's going to give it a lot of uh, detail. So uh, I just wanted to show that to you. And then another thing, when you cut your wood, if you use a, a band saw, power saw, anything like that, you want to take your edge and file it down, get that fuzz off of there because if you're indoors, it's not gonna weather off. So it's best just to knock it off, clean it up a little bit. I just use, you know, some, uh, what is this, 220? I just use a little 220, go all the way around it, clean all the edges up, you know, make them look nice and pretty. You know, uh, this one here, I was going to use that end, but it's too rotten. I couldn't get a bolt through there, and so I got to reverse that. But add character, you know, like that broken or that big knot hole, you know, the, the splinter there, you know, things like that really throw some realism into it. So, you know, be a little creative. Uh, think outside the box a little bit or above the bridge, however you want to say it. <laughs> uh, so anyway, uh, I'll get back to you when I uh, get this all squared away. Okay, I drilled the holes for those last two uh, support uh, for the uh, cables. I drilled all the way through it. This way, by drilling all the way through it, you can run your wire on one end and your nut is going to be right in line with it so it's going to look very uh, realistic so kind of keep that in mind you know if you're going to have a guide wire come through like that and you're going to put a nut on the end of it drill through it and then you know you're right on the money okay i glued all five of the very top supports for the guide cables i glued them straight okay i should have glued them at an angle because the other bridge is going to be angled a little different but 
I'm doing this because I want to see if anybody notices that they're straight and they should be angled. So I do that a lot. I, I, I deliberately do something just to see if anybody catches it. And then you've always got that great excuse if they say anything to you, say, you know, if they say, well, that's not the way it was done. You say, well, that may be, but on my railroad, that's how it was done. So win-win. Okay, there is the front side all finished got all my guides in I got all my bolts in now you see from right here this is as close as we're ever going to get to it unless I got to go in and fix it but you can see you can't really see the bolts very good but you can see that they're there okay you can't see the detail but you see them up on the top you see the bottom beam I put in uh, to cover that inch and a half wide by three-quarter inch strip underneath it and then I put some ties underneath there to make it look like it's all being supported and everything and you get an idea of what this is like okay now let me go finish the backside and I'll get right back to you okay I've got the five crossbars I pre-glued everything uh, with super glue I glued a long wire a long wire and a short wire Long wire goes on the back, short goes on the top. I can't put them in until I set this down because of the fact of the railroad ties. Okay, you notice that I used rusty parts of the wire as much as I can because I like things to look aged on my layout. And I may have mentioned this to you once before, but I'm going to do it to you again. Uh, if you need, if you've got clean wire with no rust on it, there's two ways you can rust that out. Here's a quick, easy way. You see all those? Those all look really rusty, especially that knuckle. The way I did that is I just took a 50-50 white glue mix, uh, painted it with a paintbrush on the wire, then I sprinkled the real fine, fine dust over it. And, uh, you know, some of them came apart here, but you can kind of see how it looks. It does look pretty rusty, looks rustic. Uh, that's one way of doing it. A second way of doing it is if you got the time to do it, you could put that in like a... Uh, you're going to waste material, but you can put it into a bucket of uh, acetone and let the acetone uh, bake the, uh, the covering off of it and then soak it in water. And I'll guarantee in 24 hours you'll, you'll have rust. But this is a much cleaner, faster, easier way. Cheap, free, free dirt. I love free dirt. Okay, that's it. Let me put the rest of this together and I'll get back to you. Okay, guys and gals, I got it all done. Now, as you stand, like this is about as close as you're going to get to it. You really can't even see the wires behind uh, on the back side, but you can when you start walking over this way. Uh, you can see the wires. But, you know, it's those little details that really highlight it. But there it is, it's all done. Notice I do not have the railroad ties up on that side. I could put them up anytime, that's not an issue. I needed to get that up so I need to know where my uh, scenery is going to go. Now one thing I want to tell you guys something, I may have mentioned this before, but when you use an alcohol stain, you know, I use, uh, you know, 70 or 90 percent isopropyl alcohol with uh, a bottle of Indian ink. I mix it all, mix that one ounce into that one quart and I get my uh, darkened uh, stain. It's my favorite stain that I use. But remember one thing. Uh, creosol did not come out until about the 30s. So if you're modeling below the 30s, you know, to leave splotchy, blonde-looking wood was very normal then, okay? Not everything was creosol. So kind of keep that in mind if you're going prototypical. If you're not, and I'm going to tell you this. This is one of those things that maybe one-tenth of one percent of the people you deal with will know that, okay? But I'm just, you know, giving you an insight on if you decide to go uh, full uh, prototypical or not, but you could kind of see how that looks. I mean, you know, it's, you know, it's an okay looking bridge, you know, I, you know, it's nothing that <laughs> I'd ever say is a masterpiece, but it looks like it belongs there. Uh, everything looks proper. Uh, it'll do a good job for me. Well, okay guys, that and gals, that's it for the Howl Truss Bridge Part 2. Thanks for stopping. If you like it, leave a like. Uh, if you want to subscribe, subscribe. And if you want to ask a question, feel free to do so. I'm always here. Over and out.